The Desolate House, today on Coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, bringing Jesus to your face. Now, there's lots of prophetic stuff that's been going on recently. I try to write them down as it happens. I carry my phone. I talk to my phone. I write it down. You know, if we follow the Spirit, there's this, there's this principle I employ called catch the butterfly, because if you try to catch it later, you know, he's going to be gone. So bring your net with you at all times. And that is my phone. So your if your phone's smart, it should be used as a tool for ministry. Now, these words are not spoken by Job personally, so I'm always cautious. You know, in Job 42, 7, he talks about, hey, you didn't speak that, which was right, like my servant Job has. But here's something uttered in Job 33, 14 through 18 that seems to prove out in my life, with some other scriptures, um, you know, out of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. And for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it, it not. You ever notice how you can be so busy in the, your daily life? You're just not listening to the Lord, right? And in verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their destruction. Well, you shut down your carnal mind. You, you can finally hear, you know. That, that he may withdraw man from his purpose. You know, that's our selfishness. And hide pride from man. Pride, man, pride comes before a fall. In verse 18, he says, It keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. So here's something uttered in Job 33, 14 through 18 that seems to prove out in my life of dreams and visions. Amen. So we need to honor our dreams. Okay? And... Sometimes we're wrestling with the Spirit inside of us. Uh, Psalms 4.4, 4, stand in awe and sin not. Man, this has really been coming up a lot recently. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. You know, I was talking about recently that some of the prophetic revelation is, you know, I heard the Lord say, don't sin so that you can hear. This is a recurring thing. That's, that's happening. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the uh, today. Now, I often, said, I often think about how the Lord said, let us make man in our image. In Genesis, this, this shows the plural nature of God. He's having an intrapersonal relationship. You know, spirit, soul, and heart, and body, and, you know, we're, we're made in the image of God. And like the Scripture tells us, we can be double-minded at one point, Okay, and we see that we have a soul, a spirit, a heart, and a mind, and, and, you know, they can all be in disagreement. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, says the Proverbs. But what we say with our lips can be forced by our mind, but eventually the murmurings of our lips will betray what's truly in our heart. You know, out of the heart proceeds adulteries and fornications and murders and stuff like that. So it eventually comes out of the, the lips. You know, by we will be judged by the idle word that comes out of our mouth. There is a conflict in man. Not every dream, though, is of the Lord. Not every dream. Sometimes the inner us, you know, kind of like in the King James 4.4 4 in Psalms, communion with your own heart. You know, we need to find the congruency of which side are we on, the plumb line of our spirit, the plumb line of our nature, of our spiritual nature. We need to know where we are, right? So we wrestle on our bed. You know, this is why we toss and turn. There's a conflict in our, you know, our conscious mind, and there's something down there where the Holy Spirit's poking at our convictions down there in our spirit part, and it bubbles up to the surface in a nightmare or something, because what's happening is we're having this internal conflict. We're searing our conscience against the spirit of truth. We're just not listening to it, you know? And then we work iniquity. We just do it anyway. And I had a dream recently that bothered me so much that it woke me up. Okay, I mean, one of them, right? And I'm going to share the dream with you, and then I'm going to comment on it. 
the backdrop of this dream is a road trip with my father, with my dad. I used to go on sales calls with him all over the great state of Texas, and we'd also go to Louisiana and Arkansas, and you guys are great, too. We would talk for hours. We enjoyed each other's company. There's one thing about me and Dad. We enjoyed hanging out with each other. I mean, we really loved each other. We explored. We liked doing new things together. We'd take pictures at landmarks, you know, like the new state, if we ever cross the state sign and or there's a beautiful sunset. We just enjoyed hanging out together. We'd have pic- picnics. You know, we basically just enjoyed each other's company. This dream was like this. However, we got separated somehow. Then I couldn't find him. And I began casually looking for him. And But he was nowhere to be found. I thought about his cell phone number. But I didn't know his number. A side note here, there were no cell phones when Dad and I actually went on the road trips. Then I finally got desperate to find my dad, and then I decided I would go into the restaurants and ask people if they'd seen my dad. I was going to pull out a photo of my wallet to show them and talk to them about my dad. And then I woke up. More after this. This is Jenny Reese Clark coming to you live on Coffee with Conrad. Catch my new novel, Field of Influence, and the inspiring ministry work we're doing on the Spencer Project. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's get connected on social media at JennyReeseClark.com and don't forget, ConradRocks.net. The Conrad Rocks app is now available. You can now take Conrad Rocks wherever you go. Many tabs right at your fingertips. Podcasts, YouTube videos, Conrad Rocks News, Facebook page, Google Plus, Twitter, and more. All things Conrad Rocks in one convenient place. Download the Conrad Rocks app on Google Play or in the iPhone App Store. Dig deeper. Go higher. Jesus said... If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. The Bible also says, if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Amen. Okay, the world hates you, cause it hated him first. You've been chosen by Christ, no longer under a curse. You don't belong to the world, so you're not of it. Be bold for Christ, cause he died for you in public. They persecuted him, so you better now wonder why they persecuting you. So for Christ, we gotta suffer. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. We lifting up his name, so for Christ, we put it down. Stand firm in the faith, cause you know that's your brother. Undergoing the same, we gotta lift up one another. Welcome back. Now, I have been praying about the symbology in this dream. I've been reflecting on it quite often. I've had several thoughts and prayers about this dream. Now, I want to urge you to honor your dreams. If God says he's going to speak to us through dreams, we should pay attention, even to the ones that were like, you know, that might have been pizza. Okay? Look at all the dreams in the Bible and how they were how they actually delivered people from certain destruction what if they ignored those dreams they would be ignoring the instruction of god so i woke up and i wrote down the points that i could remember and i wanted to meditate on, on it and pray about it before i actually shared it with my podcast audience this is one i'm I, i'm released to share because it not only impacts me there are prophetic implications in this dream. The first point I want to mention is the fact that dad was in my dream. My dad. You know, Jesus says things like, you're of your father, the devil. (laughs) You know, I'm like going, well, who's my dad? You know, and sometimes when we dream, the Lord will use symbols that we can relate to. Now, it isn't always a biblical symbol that we may not be familiar with. Okay, now I'm a big fan of John Paul Jackson, the late John Paul Jackson, and streams ministries on biblical symbology. But when it comes to dreams, 
I sympathize a little bit more with Mark Sharona's uh, approach to, to interpreting dreams. Now, it's the spirit. God is the one that actually interprets the dream for us, okay? You know, man can't really do it. The Lord showed me one time in a dream that interpreting dreams is like cracking into a safe. You hear the drum, the tumblers fall, and you just know that the safe is going to open, and uh, that you just know that you know. It's, it's a check in your spirit. It's this huge, like, yeah, that's it. In this case, I believe that my dad could represent the Heavenly Father, just to work out this dream. Because when I ask myself, what does Dad represent to me in this particular dream, and I pray about it, I believe it's the Father. So now I'm not asking you to agree with that, okay? You prob- I'm pretty sure a lot of you will probably disagree. But there's some other stuff that we can still glean from this dream. Don't let me lose you at this point. Let's look at the relationship aspect, okay? God was speaking to me or I was, you know, my spirit was communing with me about how I spent time with Dad. We need to spend time growing up with the Lord. You remember how Martha was much concerned about many things, but Mary was listening at the feet of Jesus, conversing with him? And he said Mary's doing that thing which is needful. We need to love Jesus with all our heart, our mind, and our strength. Dad and I, on these trips, we would reason together the scriptures, and for for many years, we would talk on the phone an hour a day, 30 minutes to an hour a day, about what the Lord has been sharing with us before he passed on. He would literally have coffee with Conrad across states. Amen? You ever think a phone call is kind of like a prayer? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know, when we're praying, we're making a phone call. To heaven. So I want you to realize that when you talk to somebody on the phone, you don't do all the talking. You listen. Amen. Dad and I had a great relationship, one that transcended authority, you know, but one that passed into the realm of friendship. You know, I could consider my dad my brother and my friend. Jesus said, you know, who are those who are my brothers and sisters and mothers, those that hear and do the will of God? You know, we would truly sacrifice ourselves for each other. And it just had a loving relationship. You know, where's our relationship with Christ? Where where are we in our relationship with Jesus right now? Do we converse jubilantly with the spirit of truth of the scriptures? Do we chew on them together? Now, remember, there's a restaurant. You know, you've got to eat the, eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, the meat of the scriptures, the milk. There's a restaurant in the dream, Okay. Do we take Jesus with us on our road trips? Do we let Jesus drive? Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. Then there was this sudden disappearance, and I'm not sure how that happened. You know how dreams are, or maybe you just there's a blank spot, you blacked out, right? I do not remember how the disappearance happened. All I know is there was a point where Dad was definitely missing. Maybe... I didn't take a precaution to prevent that from happening. I didn't have his cell phone number. Now, why is that? I should know Dad's number just in case something like that happens. You remember, I I keep saying I recently had a vision where I heard the Lord say, Do not sin so that you can hear. You know, there's a point where I stopped conversing with Dad. So I'm wondering if there was sin in my life that blocked my hearing Dad. That blocks my hearing the Word of the Lord. Now, some of you guys, when I say sin, the the knee-jerk reaction is to talk, talk about working iniquity. Okay? But no... Sin has more of a definition than that. We know that sin, if you listen to my podcast, it means to miss the mark. This means that every time you shoot an arrow, first off, you must shoot the arrow, and you must hit a bullseye, or you're sinning, right? In James 4.17, now don't freak out, okay? Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This can be proactive in nature, okay? Missing the mark is the definition that I use often for sin, And I use this illustration. 
One time I was in Hawaii, I was sold out to Jesus. I'm like, Lord, I will do whatever. I felt like Peter. Well, I'll do anything, you know? And I was walking in a miraculous time, actually. Um, I remember I remember some awesome stuff was going on. I was walking in the prophetic words and knowledge. Everything was pretty awesome with Jesus. Then one day he asked me to do something very simple, very simple. And I, I was in the parking lot at Kaneohe at the mall. And he said, you know, I want you to fall to your knees, lift your hands, and worship me right there in the parking lot. And sounds simple, right? Sounds very simple, a very simple act. But I disobeyed because I feared men. I didn't want to look stupid. I disobeyed. That was a sin. It has haunted me for, what, almost two decades. Okay. That's missing the mark. Now, I often thought about how my pride, see, I had pride there. Remember how Job said earlier in the book of Job to not have pride, right? Pride's the sin of the devil. My pride and my fear of man may have caused a whole bad chain of events. You know, and to, to, to take an extreme example, remember when David numbered Israel without consulting the Lord? You know, that's not walking after the Spirit, right? Or when, and then look at the consequences that that happened. Or when Joshua took in the Gibeon, the people from Gibeon in, in Joshua 9, and they became a constant thorn in his side because he did not follow the prescription nor the Spirit of the Lord. That was sin. It seemed like something innocent and small, but you didn't check with God, you know? So if we're sinning, it's not just working iniquity. That's the obvious thing. Oh, that's, that's a no-brainer. But if you're not following the Lord fully, what's that? I'm going to tell you something else. If you're not following the Lord fully, there's a crown that's laid up for you that he'll give to somebody else. In Revelation 3.11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. we got to hold on to the Lord, man. Okay, So I'm urging the body of Christ to be proactive and jealous for their relationship with Jesus that no one else come and take your crown. You know, many are called, few are chosen. What do you think that means? Of course, stop working iniquity, right? <laughs> of course, that's the no-brainer. But also follow him and obey the Spirit of the Lord. Take stands for Jesus in the, in the stands that he's asking us to take. Now, the next part of the dream I would like to talk about is, you know, the part where dad's absent, okay? And Here's something interesting, and, and I keep referring to the prophetic revelation that seems to come across these last few weeks here. Do not sin so that you can hear. Okay? And as I was praying about this, of course, I got James 1.13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So something draws us away. Notice James was talking about being drawn away. Our lust can cause us to be drawn away from God. I'm trying to make sure you get that. We stop walking after the Spirit. We stop valuing the things of God because something has now taken priority over our relationship with God, something that appears to be appealing to our flesh. And if we're drawn away, that means we're out of the presence of the Lord. And think of the prodigal son. Remember the father in that parable kept calling the prodigal son while he was gone dead. He said, this my son was dead, and then when he comes back, he's alive. Okay, So there's a death, which is separation of God from God, right? The second death in Revelation, right? Also, that when when uh, in that day you eat of the fruit, you shall sh truly die. Well, the day he ate of the fruit, what happened? He was banished from the presence of the Lord. He was banished from the Garden of Eden. Eden. So the prodigal son, when he comes back, he is alive. Now, one of the other revelations over the last couple of weeks, if you've been following the prophetic revelation that's been coming, is the dead wood of iniquity is used for the bonfire. Okay, We are here to stoke the fires of revival and rejoice in the truth of the baptism of fire that Jesus has done for us. You know, he baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
And if we're drawn by our lusts, James says it brings forth death. This death is dead wood, destined for destruction. Iniquity leads to death, if you, especially if you work it. If Jesus is the vine, you know, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Well, keep in mind, we need to keep that relationship alive. We need to go on those trips with Jesus. Let him drive the car. We need to talk to the Spirit of Truth about the Scriptures. Don't let our passion for Jesus die and be drawn away by our lust and let the iniquities develop so large in our eye that we can't see. We need to cast that dead part out. I die daily. The I die daily, you know, my selfish lusts that I desired have to die daily. The Spirit of Truth cleanses. And Jesus baptizes with fire. He burns that dead wood of iniquity so that we no longer have to fall bondage to it again. And we can walk in victory and we can walk in lockstep with the Holy Spirit. We can't remember, you can't see clearly with a beam in your eye. Your perception is tainted. Now, next, therefore, I want to indicate that there was some time passing before I got serious about seeking Dad. In this interim, I wasn't desperate enough to talk to people about Dad. I wasn't desperate like the woman with the issue of blood. You know, she tried everything in the flesh. And then she's like, you know, I'm going to do what the Spirit says. You know, she, that, it says, she, if I touch the hem of his garment, that comes from Malachi, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. That means the hem of his garment in the original Hebrew. She was employing faith to fight through everything, to touch the Lord, which, you know, they should have stoned her. They could have stoned her according to the law because she was unclean. I wasn't desperate like the deer that pants for the water, so my soul longs after thee. But time passed without the without dad you know and i believe that that's where we are in the church right now we have been out of fellowship with jesus for a long time there are signs everywhere that he's left the building do you realize the Lord's left the building. I'm, I'm going to read to you a scripture in Matthew 23 that parallels kind of where we are right now prophetically. Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent in thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. And then he says this, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So a whole generation of people, 40 years, continued status quo. They were sacrificing animals. They just pretended like nothing has changed. And Jesus had left the building. You get this? Jesus had left the building. The persecution of Christians was high, and the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem happened in A.D. 70. They did not heed the words of Jesus. They did not repent. They did not seek a relationship with Jesus. They were not prepared for the disappearance of Jesus. They didn't take him seriously. They were mocking like the Sodoms, Sodomites in Genesis. Remember when it said Lot's sons-in-laws took his warning as if he was mocking, like he was joking. Christians, we need to get desperate about Jesus. So much so that we'll take his picture out of our wallet and show it to strangers. We don't have to be prophetic to see that the world is not only lacking God, but we're kicking him out of our building. A plumb line has been dropped. Lukewarmness. The door's closing. You know, those, the virgins, they had the oil, just so they didn't have enough to burn. It wasn't on, They weren't on fire for Jesus. And they knocked on the door, and the door is closed. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. You know, he also says, I'm the door. You know, so there's a time 
We need to we need to seek Jesus. And I'm not trying to get you to operate out of fear. You know, just moving away from hell is not going to save you. You need to move towards Jesus. You know, the last thing I'm going to leave with you is a verse in Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. It's not over. It's not too late. We can seek the Lord. and We need to do it now. He's rewarded those that seek him diligently. Amen. Thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Thank you for listening to Coffee with Conrad. I know I'm kind of freaking people out with the prophetic stuff, but hey, you know, got to say it. If you, What are you going to do? <laughs> I was telling Susan, I'm like, you know, the good thing is I'm hearing from the Lord, but I don't really like what he's saying, but you know, that's where we are. So God bless you. Uh, remember to share these episodes with your friends, families, frenemies on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. You can even email it. Just take the link that's up there in your in your bar and share it. You know, just re- at least remember to share conradrocks.net. There's also an app. You know, I have the Conrad Rocks app. You can get all my stuff there. Everything. Videos, Bible teaching, everything. It's all there. Amen. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. Hi, this is John with John Java House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Pick Up Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. With InspirationMinistries.org. Christine White on the Standard for the Lord. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading hyphen joy. Org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are happy coffee with Conrad!